<laughs> Who will win the ultimate utensil cup? Hang on for the loop! Four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Hey, Jamie, you like to run, right? I do like to run. Uh, so I've always wondered this. Why? Okay, that's actually a good question because I remember the very first mile that I ever ran, I thought my lungs were going to explode. Oh. It was hard, but with a little bit of discipline, it turns out to be a super fun activity to do. It almost feels like you're flying. Yeah, I can kind of see what you're saying. Originally, I never thought that I would be someone who would care about gardening or like mm -hmm. planting plants, but now I'm really into it. But mm -hmm. it does take a ton of discipline. Like every day, I water my plants, and anytime I'm like out of town, I like ask my neighbor to like water the plants and like check for bugs and weeds and things yeah. like that. Like I have to ask for help and it takes exactly what you said, discipline to mm -hmm. make it thrive and keep it alive. Steady training isn't always easy. But it's worth it. When you give it all you got, you start to see results. It takes a little thing called discipline. <laughs> Hey Luke, I just wanted to take you outside for a second and show you my garden. When I first moved into this house, I was actually pretty excited about this garden because I thought, oh man, I will spend all my time and create a beautiful garden with lots of fruits and vegetables. Let me show you how that turned out. Yep, it looks terrible. So we've got some dead plants over here. There's some weeds. There's these awful little thorny bushes. I mean, they have like pretty flowers, but man, imagine poking yourself with that. That'd be terrible. Yeah, just not, not the best. So if I made good choices about this garden, I would have some fruits and vegetables to eat right now. I wouldn't just have a box full of weeds and a whole lot of bugs. You're smart, so you probably already know where I'm going with this. Jesus lived a perfect life full of good choices. So if we wanna make good choices, what do we do? Do we shave our friend list down to like 12 people and become a carpenter? No, we just try to look like Jesus. And looking like Jesus starts with good habits. Just like when you're training your muscles or you're learning to play a new instrument, it takes time and consistency to do well. It takes discipline. Discipline is steady training that you choose to do no matter what. Choosing to be disciplined means that we wanna make good habits and we'll do whatever it takes to grow. So that means we're not gonna stay where we're comfortable. We're gonna get out into the world, we're gonna learn some new things, and we're gonna ask a lot of questions. And that's what will help us be disciplined and make good choices. Having discipline doesn't just take commitment. It also takes the right tools. Ooh, hello, mystery hand. Thank you for our challenge. People use tools to practice a disciplined hobby. Who can name that hobby based on the fewest amount of tools? Yeah. Ooh. For each round, we'll give you a clue for a hobby. Bid the lowest number of tools you think you can name it in. The ultimate hobby master will win the ultimate utensil trophy. Yes. Okay, round one. This hobby is a growing trend, but the practice has been around for over 9,000 years. Ooh. Okay, I can name it in four tools. Ooh, okay, I think I can name it in three. I can name it in two. Name the hobby. Okay. Okay. Veil and gloves. Okay, so far I'm thinking rock climbing, but that's not my official guess. Okay, let's see the second tools. Oh no! Are you ready to name the hobby? <gasps> oh, I know what it is! I know what it is! What I is think it? it's beekeeping! Am I right? It is ah, beekeeping! Oh my goodness! That's awesome. So, veil and gloves. I originally was thinking fencing because you have that mask on and oh. then you have gloves. So that was my initial I thought. I thought it was fancy weddings. 
Mm. So. And then, so then we saw Smoker. And so then I was like, I can't think of anything that relates to fencing and Smoker. And so then I was thinking barbecuing. But then I remember that the way that they get bees to calm down, they'll blow smoke on the bees just so it's a relaxing experience for them rather than traumatizing. All right, let's see what other tools okay. they use. Feeders. Feeders. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And brood chamber. Is that where the, like, queen bee is? No, that, that's I'm where- I'm guessing. That's where the angry bees go to calm down. Oh. And queen, oh, queen excluder. excluder. That's probably that where they keep her. That sounds like bullying to me. <gasps> Beekeeping! Beekeeping! And because you won round one, Jamie, yes. you get to beekeep some bees. Let's bring out those bees! Round, round two. two! Okay, guys, this hobby is overwhelming, but also has many established societies to help with education. I'm gonna say four? I'll say three. I'm gonna go with two. Okay, name that hobby! All right, here we go. First guess. Binocular. Oh my goodness, that could be anything. <laughs> okay. Red flashlight. Bird watching? Okay, so I got it wrong. Uh, so I'm gonna reveal another clue and Jamie gets the guess. Okay, I, I have a I have a guess. You have a guess? I have a guess. Um, I'm wondering if it's uh like bat watching or bat viewing. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm wrong. Another okay. tool. Refractor telescope. Oh, I got it! It is uh, stargazing. Stargazing! Hey, good job! Yes! Okay, it was the telescope, <laughs> really, yeah. that yeah. gave it away. Because uh, stargazing is a bird watching of the stars. <laughs> and so that's that's I, true. I just had to think further. Star, Star chart. chart. Well, that well, would have done that it. That is very helpful. That would have, <laughs> that would have done it. All so, right. One and one. One and one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, mind and strength. Give it all you got with all your heart, with all your soul, mind and strength. Give it to God, all that you got, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength to find and grow your understanding. Jesus, I want to give you all I got open handed and follow all your commandments. So we're talking about spiritual disciplines. I don't know about you, but the first time that I heard that, I was like, spiritual disciplines? What does that even mean? And then I learned that spiritual disciplines, it's actually just another way of saying following Jesus. Things like praying, reading God's word, being generous, rest, that's a really important one, are all things that Jesus did when he was here on earth. And when we do the things that he did, we're choosing to follow him. And when we're choosing to follow him, we're actually practicing spiritual disciplines. And speaking of practicing, that actually reminds me of something. So my wife and I, we've been trying to learn Spanish. So she's part Cuban and we wanna be able to speak Spanish to her family and uh, as well as teach it to our son. And so we've been trying to learn Spanish. And so we've been practicing, but it wasn't until recently that I actually had my first dream in Spanish. I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, I dreamt in Spanish. I heard something in Spanish, I understood it, and I spoke it back in my dream. And it clicked for me that because I had been practicing in Spanish, though I may not have been even aware of it, my brain was learning Spanish. And without me trying, I went to sleep and my brain spoke Spanish. And so the same goes for spiritual disciplines. So what do we know? We know that spiritual disciplines, it's really just another way of saying following Jesus. And when we practice things, we'll see those things play out in our lives. And so just like me, when I practiced Spanish, I dreamt in Spanish, I didn't have to try. 
It just happened. When we practice following Jesus, when we do the things that he did, worship, spend time alone, read God's word, all of those things that he did, we'll become more and more like him. Our hearts will start to become new, our minds will start to become new, and we'll become closer and closer to God. Round three! Okay, so it's one to one. So this third round is the tie breaker tie round. Tie breaker. This hobby has found applications in many industries, including food, fashion, and aerospace. Three tools. I can do it in two tools. No, you cannot, Jamie. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I believe you, never mind. <laughs> Name that hobby, Jamie. Okay. In two tools. In two tools. All right, glue stick. Okay, cool. There's lots of hobbies that have glue sticks. All right, I'm gonna get a second glue. Nozzles. Uh, is it scuba diving? Jamie. Okay, so here's my thought. So I do think, you know, I, since I don't scuba dive, there might be some kind of tool called a glue stick that whenever you're getting certified, uh, that, you know, the instructor comes out and is like, okay, now it's time for us to use the glue stick. And okay. everybody's like, is this arts and crafts? I thought we were scuba diving. And then he's like, oh, I get, you know, every time, every time. But no, this is what it's for. Is it scuba diving? It can't be. Oh. No, it's not. Okay, we're getting no's. Okay. All right. Third clue then. <laughs> Digital caliper. Is it sewing? It's Jamie's turn. Filament. Mm. Something with like rocks? The last tool. Printer. It's obviously model trains. Trains? I guess I'll say model airplanes. Weather ballooning? Like making the models out of metal? But is, is 3D printing? Let's see. Yeah. 3D printing. It's 3D printing. Yeah. I don't know Pretty why cool. I didn't think of, I guess I don't think of that as like a hobby, but basically it's this machine uh -huh. that can use like filament, like little threads of plastic to like arrange oh. and stack and create things. Like people use it to like, cool. you can 3D print food. It's very fascinating. And that makes me the winner. Yay, go Ricky, go. So as followers of Jesus, one tool that we have to get to know him better is the Bible. But what do we do when God's word seems confusing? Well, to know what Jesus is saying to me, to actually read the Bible wisely, we have to remember this big idea. It's Jesus is king and context is everything. I'll go ahead and say it again. Jesus is king and context is everything. Well, what does that mean? And how does it help me understand this scripture specifically? Let's go ahead and break it down, starting with Jesus is King. What you need to know about the Bible is that it is a unified story that leads to Jesus and invites us to become more like Jesus. So when there's something that I don't understand in scripture, I can ask myself the questions, how does this passage lead me to Jesus? And how is this passage helping me become more like Jesus? Because that's the goal the entire Bible is trying to accomplish. God wants us to know him. So he introduces himself to us in the pages of scripture. And through the power of his Holy Spirit, he draws us to Jesus and transforms us to look more like Jesus. And that's part one, Jesus is king. Part two is context is everything. Something else that you need to know about the Bible is that it's a collection of writings from different genres written by dozens of authors over the course of hundreds of years to people who lived in a different time and spoke a different language than us. And that makes the Bible really challenging. But that's also what makes the Bible so beautiful because the context, the surrounding details that add meaning to a passage is the key to understanding what that passage meant to people reading it back then, which can help us figure out what it means for us now. If we don't know the context of something, it would be like trying to fill in one of those paint by number things without the key that tells you which number corresponds to which color. You can still end up with a picture that way, but it won't be the picture the artist intended. So when we read the Bible, we can start by answering questions like, what's the genre? Who's the author? When was this written and to whom? 
what language they, were they speaking, and in what kind of culture did they live? Finding the answers to these questions literally sets the stage for understanding scripture. It doesn't make you a bad Christian if you feel uncomfortable about something in the Bible, or if there's a scripture that's hard to take at face value. In fact, I would venture to say that it's actually a really good thing if you feel that way. Because those feelings of discomfort and your questions are meant to motivate you to lean in, to keep digging and asking and seeking until you find the answer. We don't grow if we always stay where we're comfortable. And we can't gain new knowledge apart from asking questions. So when you feel those feelings, learn to see them not as an opportunity to bail out, but an invitation to dig in. Hey, Loopsters, if you have your very own smart rectangle, then it's time for you to download the YouVersion Bible app. The YouVersion Bible app has a lot to offer to help you engage with God's word every day. There you can find Bible reading plans that you can complete with your friends. You can highlight verses you want to come back to, and you can keep up with the kids' Bible experience, which has daily videos, questions, and verses you can engage with every day. Starting this habit will help you connect with the Bible daily and challenge you to apply God's word to your everyday life. So if you're looking to get into God's Word, check out the YouVersion Bible app. Reading God's Word is an important spiritual discipline that we all need to practice. So don't wait. Dive into the Bible this week and hear what God is telling you. I love this trophy. Ah, oh, it's so cool. And I mean, a lot of these tools I can use for gardening. Like, like this can be a shovel and this can be scissors and this can be a hammer. I don't know how I'll use it, but I'll figure something out. And you know what, Jamie? I will take up the hobby of 3D printing and okay. recreate this on a much smaller scale Aww. eventually. And, and give it to me? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Discipline is steady training. And spiritual disciplines help us stay close to God daily. If you ever wish that you could make better decisions, check out how Jesus did it. Read about what Jesus did in the Bible and follow his example. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Come on, Loopsters, give it all you got. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. Bink. Oh, Ooh. Yeah, that looks sharp. Spiky. Want some more tools to help you read the Bible? Check out this video. Oh, and figure out this hobby. Uh, it involves liking, uh, becoming a looster, and leaving a comment. <gasps> Subscribing to the Loop Show! That's right! Woo That's right! Uh, oh, Be a looster. Yeah. Join it's the hobby. Fun. You won't regret it like scuba diving with glue sticks. <laughs> That's right.